Hi everyone, it's Andy Thomas here from Abacus Jack Accountancy. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of forecasting and scenario planning, and generally looking at the performance of your business going forwards. It's often an area that gets forgotten about because traditionally accountancy is all about producing um, re historic reports um, and looking at data that, that is in the past. Um, but it's really important um, to keep one eye on what is happening now and indeed what could happen in the future. So looking at different types of scenarios. I'm going to share my screen with you um, and show you our dashboard that we use for clients um, to help them stay on top of their, their business performance and help them plan for different scenarios. Um, it's quite simple to use and it's quite interactive because what it lets you do is create different, um, different forecasts, create different um, scenarios that may or may not happen and see what effect that has on your underlying cash or your balance sheet, for example. So I'm just gonna flip the screen now and bring that up. Okay, hopefully you can, you can see that. So what we're looking at here is a, a dashboard view of a, a demo company, okay? Um, this is dummy data. And we're looking at their summary profit and loss statement um, for last month, so for January 2021. And it's a fairly summary level, um, and, and therefore some people may, may wish to see sort of more detail. Um, the way the dashboard works is it kind of lets you drive how you want to see the data. Um, it can go to quite a granular level, but equally that can bring complexity. Um, some business owners just want to see the headlines and be able to make decisions. So this profit and loss table here um, is, as I say, at a summary level. I can quickly show you how easy it is just to bring that out to show you all the, all the detailed P&L categories. Most of you will be familiar with, with those, so your, your payroll, travel, your marketing, that kind of stuff. Um, you also might want to kind of quickly look at how different periods compare. Um, at the moment, we're looking at January and we're comparing it with December. But up here, I can switch that to look at quarters or years, and I can obviously change the month. So after, let's say, for example, we want to see how we did last quarter, and we want to compare that to how we did in the previous quarter. So it's quite simple to do that. Um, you just select the months that you want to see, and the data will adjust. But that is historic data. And I said at the start of this video, we wanted to look at kind of future um, scenarios and, and look at how to, to plan ahead. So the main uh, point I want to try and get across is that by using the, the power of data and the power of analytics, we can do some really clever things in terms of helping you make business decisions. This next part of the dashboard I want to show you is called Goal Seek. And what this does um, is it lets us change the way we uh, the way we run our business and see what the effect that would have on certain metrics. So at the top here, I'm going to say to the system, um, what changes I do I need to do to increase, um, let's say increase my gross profit um, from what it is now 660,000 um, in this particular quarter, let's say I want to bring that up to 800,000. What the system is doing is it's basically giving you um, some options to, to achieve that goal. Um, and this is actually really useful because what it's saying here is that as a standalone measure, you could increase your price um, by 9.37% and, and keep everything else the same. You could increase your volume in terms of what you're selling by 20% and keep everything else the same. Or you could reduce your expenses, um, for example, here, your cost of sales, your materials and your, um, your costs, you could reduce them by just over 17%. And that would give you your goal. But in reality, you're going to want to probably do a combination of each one. So I want to show you how easy it is to say, for example, okay, well, let's, we're obviously in a, in a, in a price competitive market. So we can't, we can't change the price of this business. Um, of its goods by, by 9%, but maybe we could do 1%, okay? So I put 1% in there. And instantly it's saying, well, actually, if you did nothing else, but, but change just the price by 1%, then 
then you are well, about a fifth of the way towards your goal there. Um, let's say again, volume wise, yeah, we're quite efficient. So let's say we could increase our volume by maybe not the full 17 and a half percent it's telling us, but maybe we could do um, say 8% in there, okay. So that tells us that if we just did those two changes alone, we're nearly halfway towards our, our target of increasing our gross profit um, to 800,000, so up nearly a third. Of course, the, the final one there is saying, well, if you, if you are able to reduce your costs, that, that will help you go um, the rest of the way. Um, so I'm going to say, yep, yeah, I want to reduce my costs. I'm going to go a 5% reduction there. Forgot to put the minus in, let's put that in. Okay, so we're going to go down 5% with our costs and we are practically there with three quarters of the way towards reaching our goal. And this is where you can kind of sit and tweak the figures. Um, you know, so if we, if we go back and tweak that to 2%, then we're pretty much uh, we're pretty much there, and this ability to kind of plan different goals within the business is really powerful, particularly for industries that sell products, um, and for or for industries that sell a, a, a service where you could increase the price point of your service by a very small amount, but actually that has quite a big overall effect on on the numbers. Um, and it's not just profit you might want to track. As I say, there's other metrics in here as well. So, for example you might want to um, look at the margins. So operating profit margin is something that I, I talk to businesses about a lot because different industries have different kind of mead, um, mean operating profits. So a service-based industry might be able to operate at a profit margin of sort of 30%, which is, which is really high because they generally don't have that many costs, perhaps other than sort of salaries. Um, but a retail business, really competitive retail business, might only be looking at sort of 5%, 10% profit margin. Um, and one of, the, one of the things we do with clients is we look at how other people are performing in, in the industry and we, we speak to them about how their business compares to that. Um, so again, if we wanted to increase the profit margin, and let's change a few of the metrics here. So let's say that in, uh, in December... So in December, it was, uh, it was just, just nearly 9%, but we wanted to get it to 12%. So the system is telling us the standalone changes that would need to happen to enable that change. And we as business owners can then see, what well, is that realistic? Maybe we, we can do a combination of these changes. So again, price, um, we'll just do a little price change um, and we'll do a little volume change. And already we're kind of starting to see that we're nearly at the goal just by doing those two things. If we, if we can you know, reduce costs a little bit further, then that's good as well. So for those of you that, that are uh, out there running your small businesses, I, I want you to try and think of small tweaks that you can potentially make to your finances and to, the, to your business plan in terms of your pricing and your costs um, to maybe get some, some quite big changes to the underlying profits um, or, or the underlying sort of, um, margins of that business. Because a lot of us, we kind of go on month and month, we see money coming into the bank, we see the bills we have to pay. But do we really understand how we're performing, not just for our own benefit, but against other, other, other businesses in the industry? And there's tools like this that can help you kind of stay on top of that. And as I said at the beginning, 2021 is really going to be about staying on top of the numbers um, and making sure that we understand what's going on. Okay, so... I'm just going to show you a couple of other areas of the dashboard, although I'm conscious that it's quite a complex area to kind of put into a video. Um, but cash flow is, is something that comes up time and time again. Cash flow is obviously the kind of heartbeat of most businesses. It enables what they're, what they're earning in terms of, of, of invoicing to then be converted to money that can be spent on wages, development, whatever it might be. Um, and we present this graphically now. Um, so what you're kind of viewing here is a, a view of a cash flow statement, um, but it's, it's presented graphically to help you try and understand it. Um, so for this particular business, it's this demo business that I'm showing you, um, for the month of December, um, they had a revenue of just over a million pounds, 1.3 million. Um, but you can sort of chop off from that straight away. They had the, the um, costs and expenses, 
Um, and then they had uh, you know some other some other kind of costs coming out as well, some taxes, that kind of thing. Um, but then as you move down, the, the balance sheet element starts to come into it. So not all of that revenue is going to land in the same month because clients pay at different times, invoices have got different terms. So what it's saying is actually the, the real change in kind of accounts payable, the, the real change in what the business was able to gather was more like uh, 99,000. Um, and it starts to build a picture up of what that's doing to your underlying cash. So in this particular example, we take into account all aspects of the balance sheet, you know, depreciation, um, interest, other liabilities, uh, dividend payments, all things like that taken into account. And it gives us like a, a net cash flow figure. Um, net cash flow is basically you know, that, that element of cash that, is, is, that the business has generated after taking into account all of its expenses, all of its running costs, um, you know, all of its kind of late payers, early payers, whatever it might be. It's the real tangible amount of cash that's left. Some months, um, you know, even very profitable businesses will have a negative cash flow. If, for example, they've got one client that's really late paying, um, it can have a, a real effect. And just by monitoring this, it helps you stay on top of it and understand what's, what you're able to do going forward. Um, I would, of course, you know, encourage anyone with, with, who wants to explore this in, in more detail to get in touch and we can, we can show you some um, scenarios purely based for your business and how it might help your business. Um, but I'm really keen that as small businesses, we start to think more about what is happening um, in the months ahead rather than worrying quite about what has happened. Um, you know, 2020 um, is a year that was challenging for all of us. And um, at some point we will, we will see our accounts for that year and you guys will work with your accountants to get that done. But really, that's just a compliance exercise, okay? Don't worry too much about what has happened. Focus more on what is about to happen or what can happen. Um, and I'm gonna do another video over the next uh, few weeks that purely focuses on how to build out a forecast. Um, again, using this kind of dashboard view, um, you don't have to be a, um, a kind of wizard on Excel or anything like that. This is uh, moves away from spreadsheets. It moves into a more dynamic model um, of being able to kind of almost drag and drop elements into your forecast. Um, for example, your hiring plans, um, or you might, you know, might want to uh, forecast out when buying equipment such as a, a vehicle or, or something like that. And we'll show you how to kind of literally sort of drag and drop those elements into your forecast very easily. But I think that's probably about enough for today. Um, so hopefully you, you've seen that, you found that useful and seen that um, actually by kind of using a bit of, um, a bit of technology, can really help you understand what's going on in your business um, and around the kind of performance. So please do get in touch, let me know your thoughts um, and uh, you know, let me know if there's anything else that you particularly like to see in these videos or if there's anything you're struggling with. Um, the more feedback we get, the more we can react to that and obviously try and try and help you out. Um, I think that's, uh, that's probably all we'll, we'll say for today. So thanks very much for listening guys and uh, we'll be back soon.